Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Carla from Rehan Alawala's World of Connections, as well as the Ministry for English Literacy, here to speak to one of my speakers on the conference, Lisa Lopez, who knows very well and is very well versed in speaking about speaking to English second language speakers in English and helping them learn to comprehend better. And I am super excited to talk to her about this because really this is something that concerns me every day I do my English shows because I'm not sure that people totally understand. This show, like all of my shows is sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which is an online organization promoting peace one conversation at a time. Having said this, Lisa, could you please, please introduce yourself? Ah, thank you, Carla. Well, yes, as you said, my name is Lisa Lopez. I was born and raised in California in the United States. Um, I've been teaching English since 2013 to people from all over the world. Um, I have some Turkish students, German, um, lots of Asian students, um, some South American students and other countries in Europe as well. And um, I prefer to teach English to adults but I do have some nice boys that are um, Czech. Mm -hmm. And that is my introduction. Thank you. Okay. Now you just said that, first of all, let's go back a little to your life. You were born in California, but now you're in Santiago, Chile. How did that happen? Ah, well, yes, basically. Mm. I was born there, you know, with my parents. And then I went to university in Northern California. Um, and after that, I entered the workforce. Uh, I worked for a few years in Northern California, but I didn't like the weather there. So I moved back down to Southern California to San Diego the second time. And I really like to travel. So after taking vacations, um, usually two week vacations in places like Lima, Peru, Florence, Italy, Dublin, Ireland, um, Costa Rica, and some other countries around the world, I decided to see what it was like to live overseas. So I went for a really long uh, three month vacation um, and in October, 2019, and I liked Chile so much that I decided to stay. What is it about Chile that you really like? Mm. I mean, I would say I like living abroad. Mm -hmm. I like experiencing different cultures. I'm not gonna stay in Chile forever because it's a bit too cold here in the winter. But um, before the next winter comes in Chile, I plan to go and stay for a while, maybe a year, in another country. Wow, how cool. Now, <laughs> when you graduated school, did you start teaching ESL or where? what was your main concern at that point? Ah, well, I graduated, um, I went to UC Berkeley, that's my alma mater. And I um, got degrees in psychology and linguistics. And at that time, I was pretty much trying to find myself. And so I started in the field of human resources. And I worked as a, usually a human resources coordinator for various companies, such as a nonprofit law firm, um, a hotel, um, a factory, I think they were manufacturing company. Um, so yes, human resources for various companies. But 
it didn't allow me enough interaction with other people. Um, the companies were usually very small. And so I only interacted with my immediate team, maybe 10 people. Um, since I really like talking to other people and hearing people's stories, I decided to work events, a little bit of marketing. Um, so after human resources, I started uh, working at concerts, um, helping the public during conventions, uh, working with the public at fairs, things like that. Um, but I didn't offer the stability that I liked. There weren't any benefits or anything like that. So after that, in order to continue talking to the public and hearing their stories, but also have a little more stability at work, I got into teaching ESL. What made you turn to ESL? Ah, mostly the fact that I would be able to interact with people from all over. Mm -hmm. and have a more stable job, uh, a schedule that didn't change every week, every day. Wonderful. Now, comprehension and understanding is very important in a conversation and very important in everything we do. How, and I'm really, I am strongly concerned about it because it's been something that I see as a problem in when I'm working with people in Pakistan and all over the world too. How do you begin to teach comprehension? Hmm. I tell them to listen a lot outside of class, listen to music, listen to the same thing many times, try not to use subtitles, even though you really want to. And most importantly, try to focus on getting the gist. No, you don't need to understand every single word. Um, sometimes that's impossible, even for native speakers, if someone has a thick accent or if someone's speaking too fast. And so instead, focus on the main information, the WH information questions, okay? Focus on who is doing what, where, why, when, and how, but not every single tiny little word. Some of them are very unimportant to the conversation. Everyone comprehends or understands in a different way. I don't think there are two people in the world who think the same. How do you get understanding of words? Like you can say house and some people will think of an apartment. Some other people may think of a big farmhouse because that's where they grew up. Or some may think of a row house. Hey, my house is here. How do you teach them to actually hear what's being said? Mm. I would say, unless it's important, I probably wouldn't focus on the house too much. I mean, the part that matters is just it's an, a living establishment. Unless you are buying or selling the house, the type of house doesn't matter. Whether it's a bungalow or a ranch house or um, a mansion is irrelevant to the conversation. So if they want to, they can ask clarifying questions, but if it's not relevant to the conversation, then you can just kind of block that part out and skip it. Okay, that's true. But I'm talking about teaching them to understand what you're saying. Like the other day, we were clearly trying to get someone to get to my show. And he clearly did not understand that when you're at the show, you keep the mic 
close until you're, it's your turn. So how can we make comprehension a little easier for anyone and everyone? Mm. What do you do to help them comprehend what's being said? Mm. I say things in a different way. I use synonyms. I paraphrase. Um, I demonstrate. Okay. I would turn my audio on and turn my audio off. Um, those are the main techniques that I use. Okay, can you give us an example of this? Ah, yes. Well, yes, if you want someone else to turn off your mic or turn off their mic, then you just demonstrate, okay? You can also share your screen and show them where the mic is and how to turn it off and on. You can give them the keyboard shortcut, which is to tell them to click Alt A on their computer. Okay. So these various methods. Okay. You in a conversation, what let's say they're not even talking to you, they're talking to someone else. What are some of the tips you ask them to bring up? to make the, make, to understand. Let's say they don't understand and many times someone is afraid to ask or say, I don't understand. Ah, okay. Mm, let's see. Well, maybe wait for a pause if you're shy. Mm, I'm shy. And even though I am an adult, yes, sometimes I still do raise my hand and wait for them to call on me um, because I don't want to interrupt. Mm, there's also, usually people try to help if you look a little lost or confused. So you could try looking like you don't understand if you're afraid of asking. Um, you could tell the other person, um, that you mm, mm, are a foreigner maybe, or that English is your second language and ask them to speak slow and, or ask them to repeat. If this is general information, general knowledge, then you could just ask somebody else. That is what I did when I was in Chile. I asked directions from one guy I asked him again and I didn't understand him. I asked him again and I didn't understand him. So then I just asked somebody else. Are there techniques that you use to help people understand certain words? Because many times I see people will be, I don't want to tell her I don't understand because if I do, she's going to, you know, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I would I say, can, or I cannot say the words properly. Mm -hmm. And I say, instead of speaking fast, slow down your language. And mm -hmm. by slowing down your language, it's easier to understand you. The sounds are a little different in different languages. Mm -hmm. I would generally say, um, hmm, well, yes, in order to make them feel comfortable asking me questions, hmm, when I talk with people, I generally have a friendly demeanor. And I think that this makes other people comfortable speaking to me. Um, so, they should definitely try to find someone that they're comfortable talking to. Um, after that, hmm, if they have a question, then they should try not to be afraid to ask it. If they're afraid of asking, specifically, you can always make a 
I don't understand sound like uh, mm, so something like that that way you won't have to ask what something means um, you can also ask what it means using incorrect grammar lots of people do that um, and but I would say the main thing is that you have to ask because if you don't ask, then you won't know, you won't learn. So you have to get over that fear. How do you help people do that? Mm, by being myself, by telling them that I don't know all of the words in the English language, not even I know what they mean. That's what the dictionary is for. Um, by basically just by being their friend, by being their friend. Now you have worked with people all around the world since how long? Eight years now. I think so, since 2013. I'm really bad at math. <laughs> eight years, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. How did you develop um, such a large group and a, such a large way to help people learn to comprehend? Yeah, mostly through trial and error. Um, yes, when I started, well, I got a certificate in teaching English as a second language, but I didn't really have that much experience. Mm, I usually don't work with large groups um, because people need more, you know, one-on-one -on -one attention um, in order to be able to understand and to speak as well. Um, but yes, sometimes you teach them some of the words, for example, most uh, people, when they learn English, I guess, yes, they learn about first, second, third. So if they're trying to listen for someone to switch a topic, they will listen for these words, but they won't listen for something like rhetorical questions or however, or um, other words that someone might say when they're going to switch topics. So how do you teach them to use these words? Hmm. I normally find resources online. Mm -hmm. Can um, you give us an example? Well, the last time I did this with a student, which was pretty recently, earlier this month, um, we listened to a TED talk together. I asked her which words signaled the change of a topic. She told me some of the words and I filled her in on which other words it would be good to pay attention to. Can you give me, you know, can you give me a more direct example of how to do this? You do something so very, very important. And I know you take it as second nature. I know what I'm doing. But it doesn't always work. I tell people to slow down. I tell people to talk about things. They know I help them get to something they feel very comfortable with. So can you help me? help them feel more comfortable, if that makes sense. Does that question make sense to you? It does, but I'm not sure. I mean, I, I guess I could, okay. Hmm. I think I try to find some things that we have in common. So, okay. Um, for example, my Czech student, I mean, at first I thought it would be quite difficult because she's like 15 years old and I'm 35. So there's like a 25, 
a 20 year old, a 20 year age gap. And, you know, I don't speak any Czech. So when we first, and I think she uses Instagram and I don't. Um, so when, when I was about to meet her, I was like, we're not going to have anything in common, like nothing. Um, but she likes Christina Aguilera and I like Christina Aguilera too. So, mm, and how did, of, you find, how did you find that common bond? Oh, well, I just asked her. Uh, she said, um, let's see, at the beginning, yes, when we were first meeting each other, I asked her to tell me more about herself. She said she likes singing and doing sports. And then, then I told her what English, I asked her what English music she listens to. And I think she said Christina Aguilera and Ed Sheeran and somebody else who I can't remember. And so I was like, okay, Christina Aguilera. Mm -hmm. So did you pick up song to begin with or did you? No, I mean, I, I already knew the song and I told her the song and she was like, oh yeah, I know the song. I'm like, okay, good. And I was like, oh, I also like this other Christina Aguilera song. And she was like, yeah, I know that one too. And I think that's when we, we clicked. Mm -hmm. Okay. You used a song. Do you have her talk, you know, tell you the lyrics and then use the lyrics to help create comprehension? No, I would say her comprehension's already pretty good. Mm. I don't usually work with low level people. So that's, that might be why you're not getting the answers you're looking for. Mm. Usually, ah, there is Jean though. So Jean Gruber, okay. So yes, Jean Gruber, mm, let's see. He's from Lima. Mm -hmm. And right now he's living in, um, no, he's from Venezuela. And right now he's living in Peru. And his comprehension isn't so high. But yes, normally, if their comprehension isn't that high, I change the question. So when we normally, when we're talking about people, start with, what do you do? Okay. And then um, what is your work or what is your job? So if they don't understand, then I change the question. I'm not, I'm trying to get you to give me a clear convert. Okay, what would you change? Let's say we were talking about school. And you were asking that, asking me about what I like to learn. And I would say, I like recess. And okay. to get me somewhere else. Maybe yeah. let's do some role play so they, it's a little more understand, clear yeah. on what you're saying. So normally when I start off asking about school, I ask, what subjects do you like? What's your favorite subject? Some students don't know the word subject. So I would, so then I give them examples. Do you like math, English, science? And then after I mean, that- What's the role play? Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, because it may make more sense. I'm your student. We're meeting okay. for the first time. Yes. They teach. Hi, yes. What's your favorite subject? Lunch. Ah, well, mm, what kind of class do you like more? Do you like math, art, science? Recess, I want to go play. Ah, okay. And what about when you're not at recess? What about when you're with your teacher? Yuck. <laughs> I'm giving you, I'm trying to be a little difficult so you mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get into your techniques a little more. Good, good. No I don't problem. have a favorite teacher. Oh, okay. 
What do you like to play at recess? I like to swing on the swings. Ah, good, good. And what do you do after school? Swing, talk to my friends, eat dinner, watch TV. Ah, good. Okay, no homework then. Well, no, I have it, but I pretend I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. Mm. Okay, I see. Do you like science? Do you like the solar system and different planets? When you said science, what do you mean? Ah, like the different planets or like plants and animals? Animals, yeah, I like animals. You like animals, good. Okay. And what's your favorite animal? A dog. A dog, okay, good. Do you have a dog? Yeah, I do, actually. Excellent. What's his or her name? Goaty. Goaty, okay. So, I think that's it, Carla. I mostly okay, just... we're down to a dog. What kind of? Mm -hmm. Yes, what yes. What are you doing with your dog? Exactly, yes. So, if they don't understand 100%, mm -hmm. mm, I feel like that's okay, especially for beginners. Um, usually, when they're intermediate or advanced, then they know at that time how to ask when they don't understand and um, you know how to answer questions and their comprehension is already at the top but if they don't understand when they're a beginner then that's not a problem for me we can just talk about something else so what can we talk about teach ah your favorite food if you like sports um why dogs are your favorite animal, the last time you went to the zoo. I have had dogs all my life. Mm. Okay, good. How many do you have now? I have one. Yes, one. Okay, good. And what do you do with it every day? I play with it. Mm. Okay. And good. I walk it. Okay. How long have you had it for? Huh. 16 years. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. Okay, good. Do you want to get another pet? Yeah, possibly. Mm. Okay. Would it be another dog or a different animal? I think it's most likely going to be a cat. Ah, okay, okay. Very nice. What do you know about cats? Cats say meow, meow. <laughs> I woke up my cat when I did that. <laughs> yes, that's true. Cats purr, they go meow. Okay. Meow. How are cats different from dogs? Cats don't like to listen. <laughs> okay, I see. Do dogs listen? Sometimes they can be a pain in the neck too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, good, good. If you were a dog, what kind of dog would you be? I think I'd like to be a golden retriever. A golden retriever. Wow. Okay. Very nice. Okay. 
And what do you think is the most fun thing you can do with your dog? Play fetch. Play fetch. Awesome. Very nice. How often do you take your dog to the vet? Once a year, maybe. Ah, He's I'm glad you know what a vet is. Oh, I should have. Oh, yes. Yes, a vet is an animal doctor. Mm -hmm. Why are they animal doctors? Hmm. That's just our name for them. What does that mean, our name for them? Ah, that's what we call I think them. It's difficult. So you are Carla, and an animal doctor is a vet. Really? Yes. How often should I take my dog to the vet? Oh, I have no idea. I don't have pets, so I don't really know anything about them. Oh. I see. How can I help you learn? About pets? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yes, you can tell me everything that you know about them. Maybe next time we can talk about their diet, what food they eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is how you develop the rapport. Yes. Did you have fun doing that with me? Definitely. <laughs> what are some words you'd like to leave our audience with? Ah, mainly, yes. If you're just starting out, listen, 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 listen. It doesn't matter that you can't understand. You only want to be able to feel to get the rhythm of the language. You can listen to anything you like. There's a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of different types of music, and a lot of TV shows. After that, the second step is to listen and repeat. Repeat after the, what the people are saying. Not every word, just repeat two or three words at the end, at the end, at the end. Those would be my words. Why, um, what happens if I don't want to listen? Hmm, well, you can't get better at listening unless you listen. So there must be something that you like to listen to, podcasts, news, music, audiobooks, TV shows. And why is listening a good thing when it comes to communication? Hmm. Well, it'll help you get information that you didn't know before. It'll help you respond in the correct way. Listening mm, somewhat helps us improve our pronunciation if we listen and then repeat. Mm -hmm. Do you tell your students to practice listening as well as speaking? Yes, definitely. That's really good. I tell that to my students too. Nice. Where did just one quick question. Where did you find all these students from around the world? Hmm. Well, some of them are paid students. And so usually um, they came through different companies mm -hmm. because I work for different companies. Oh. Um, some of them are referrals for my other students, uh, from, from my other students. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for speaking with me. And thank you so very much for giving me your time 
to speak with me. Do you want to say anything else before we close? Ah, you're welcome, Carla. And no, thank you. And I hope that everyone likes the video. Okay, let me mention that I want to thank you for speaking with me. And there's a lot to learn from Lisa. You may want to click on her bio and learn more about what she does and improve your own listening skills. Because although you may be speaking, your listening skills is where you really learn English. And having said that, I want to remind you that the show is sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which is an online organization promoting peace one conversation at a time. And can we use a wave to say goodbye, Lisa? Bye bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening and being a part of this conversation.